Hi honeys, it's Michelle and Zelda. And we're here today to talk to you about the books that we kind of read together, really, in August. <laughs> you know she's always with me. Um, she's my little cuddle bug. She's always on my lap or sitting with me when I read. So I feel like her and I read books together. So it's kind of funny that I told her, I'm doing a book video today and she came and sat with me. So. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to not bug her too much, but I want to at least pet her so she'll say hi to you guys. Right? Girl. Go. <laughs> She's so sweet. I'm doing this book review of the, there's three books that I read this month. It was a slow reading month for me. I, I was hoping to get through more, but it just is what it is. Sometimes life gets in the way a little bit. Be sure to stay tuned at the end of the video. I'm doing a thousand subscriber giveaway that is book inspired. The first book I read is The Finishing School and this is by Joanna Goodman. I actually got this at the Dollar Tree and I was shocked because I give this book a five out of five stars. It was so good. Right away, this book felt like sliding into my favorite pair of pajamas. It just felt really cozy, felt very familiar. I felt, I'm not going to say I felt like I was the main character, but I just felt a connection with the main character right away. The book takes place in present day, but she keeps thinking about her life at boarding school in the 90s. And I think that might have added to my connection with her because I too went to boarding school in the 90s. I only went for, I think it was three months. So it wasn't, it was just at the end of the school year and I begged my mom to never have to go back. <laughs> and thank God she didn't make me go back because I did not like it. But I, it just felt so familiar. It brought back a lot of those days and made me think of my roommate who I've never been able to find since... We stayed in touch until we were about 20 and I've never, she just disappeared and I, I've never been able to find her. But it just brought back so many memories of the mysteriousness of high school. I, I, it's hard to put my finger on it, but it always felt like my friends and boys, there was so, they were all so mysterious to me. It was hard to understand anybody. Not that I understand anybody now, but I understood them even less back then. And that feeling of being flawed that I think all teenagers have. I mean, there's really something wrong with me. I don't fit in, right? That's how the main character felt also. And I think we've all had that friend at some point, especially probably in junior high or high school where they were the popular pretty one and maybe you weren't which is always difficult because you kind of get swept aside for that person, right? There was a bunch of 90s references. Celine Dion, Joan Osborne. I know you remember Joan Osborne, right? What if God was one of us? That one? That, I mean, just, it was just so wonderful to be put back in the 90s again. So this boarding school is in Switzerland. So it's really interesting because it covers what it might be like to live there and what it might be like to be in a boarding school there as a teenager. The author is from Canada and when the main character is in current time, she's in Canada. I believe it was Toronto. And I find that interesting too because I know we're not that far from Canada. I know we're neighbors. I spent a lot of time in Canada as a child, but it's still a different world to me and it's still a different culture. Um, so it's always interesting to read books written by authors who live in different cultures. I just like that. I like reading things that come from a different perspective. And I know they're still similar, but they're not the same, right? This book really stimulated the part of me that loves traveling and it made me feel like I was traveling at a time when I can't really travel which I loved the last fourth of the book it is 
mysterious, sizzling, exciting. It was really hard to put down. I do want to tell you, this is, a, I want to give you a little bit of a trigger warning though. If you are easily triggered by rape or pedophilia, you might want to avoid reading this. Now, I found it to be very healing actually reading what I read, but I could see how it might really disturb some people. So I just kind of wanted to forewarn you, but I highly recommend this book. It is uh, once again, it's The Finishing School by Joanna Goodman. The second book that I read was The Existence of Amy by Lana Grace Riva. This author sent this book to me and asked me to do a review on Goodreads. And I really wanted to go ahead and do an in-depth book review of it here on YouTube. And I, and I did. So I will link that down below. But I also just, I'll tell you quickly though with this one, this book is about a lady named Amy who struggles with anxiety, depression, OCD. If you or someone you know is struggling with those things and you either want to get them help or you want help, I really recommend reading this. If you know someone who struggles with uh, mental illness, it's good because it helps you understand mental illness and how to help people that have it. If you have mental illness and you read it, it will help you understand what you're feeling and, and how to get help. I just thought it was really good. There's definitely some things that could have been a little bit better about it, especially when it comes to the characters and their stories and, and maybe kind of lack of it as far as it's really more about the mental part of it, but I still really recommend it. And I think everybody either struggles with mental illness or is close with someone who does. So I feel like everybody should read this book. I did give it four out of five stars just because of the lack of um, character development in it. If you want a more in-depth description of what I thought, be sure to tune into the, the video that I did solely on this book. And the last book that I read was this, uh, The Shadows We Hide by Alan Eskins. I read his other book, uh, The Life We Bury, a few months ago, and it was so good. So I wanted to read this one too. This is the uh, sequel to it. So book number two, and I don't know, I see that he's come out with a few more books since then. I don't know if they are a third, if one of them is the third book to this, or if they're um, in different character, or if they're different characters. But I just love Alan Eskin's writing. It is, it's just, it's amazing. I fell in love with this book within the first 10 pages. I just immediately was taken with it. I was thinking about it when I wasn't reading it. I really liked it. This book is about, um, it, it's a, a journalist who, he's never known who his dad is. And through a roundabout way, finds out that he might now know who his dad is, but he passed away and he might have been murdered. So he travels to this small town that his dad is from to find out if he is his dad and if he was murdered or not. So there's a lot of twists and turns and then his personal life and his younger days all kind of tie into it. There's a lot of, there's an underlying theme in this book of redemption and forgiveness, which I love. I will say the very end of the book maybe about the last fourth. For me, it kind of slowed down a little bit. I know I would have to say the author meant for the momentum to stay high, but for me, for some reason, it started to fall off. I, I, I just wasn't sure that I really cared for the way it ended. Not the very ending, but just the, the whole chunk of the ending. Um, some of the whodunit part and who actually did it kind of thing, because there was multiple different crimes that took place. It just didn't quite fit for for me. Regardless, I still thought it was a really good book. I give it four out of five stars. Um, 
and I just recommend this author. If you like thrillers, if you like mysteries, if you like things that are a little bit fast paced and, and trying to figure out what's going on, I really recommend it. He's also just such a good writer. Just a beautiful writer. I love the way he writes things. Just to give you a quick example of how he draws me in right away. First page of the book, okay? I don't know when it happened, but at some point I got cocky. I stopped counting my faults and became charmed by the image I put forth for the rest of the world. A side of me that allows people to find their own kindness in my plight. I love it. Very heady and thoughtful. If you're a thinker and you like to ponder different things, this is the author for you. He's wonderful. And now I wanted to talk to you about the thousand subscriber giveaway. What I'm going to do, I'll show you what's in the giveaway. I'm going to take a photo of some of the items in the giveaway and I will post it on my Instagram page. Here's my handle up here. All you have to do is go to my Instagram page um, and in the comment section of the photo, leave an emoji of your favorite animal and that's how you enter. It's as simple as that. On Monday, I am going to be doing a vlog video and uh, my husband and I will put all the names into a hat and, and just draw one just nice and random and we'll do it on camera so you can see that it was fair. And then whoever won, I will send a direct message to on Instagram uh, to get your address so I can send it to you. So it's pretty simple. And I just want to thank all of you for all of your support. It just means the absolute world to me. I love the connection that I've been getting with so many of you. And I know there's even more of you out there that maybe don't comment but still watch every video. And I, I appreciate you too. And I I just love this this little family that we've been uh, creating in the last year and a half. So thank you so much. Okay, as far as the items go, um, I've got this LED clip-on book light, and I have one, and I love it. It's wonderful. So I, I didn't want to get anything for you that I didn't already know was wonderful, but I really think that you'll like this. Some, not all, but some of these items are from the Dollar Tree. As many of you know, I shop there a lot, and um, it, it only made sense to me to get some things there that, that I love. Um, so I've got this little portfolio here that has post-it notes in it. It's just wonderful, and it's got this little Velcro here so that you can, and when you take the plastic off, you can keep it closed and everything. I will forewarn you, the sticky notes, they're okay. They're not, I mean, they work, especially if you're marking the pages of a book, you know, with these, or you're um, marking recipes that you want to try or something like that, but these sticky notes here, this stick on them, it's it's okay, it's not good. It's not not like the actual um, post-it notes brand. So I just I want to be really transparent and honest with you that these ones are okay, but they're, they're cute and they're nice. And you know, if you want them to stick on something, maybe just, uh, use a little tape or something. I got some of these zebra mechanical pencils. I just think these are so beautiful. Just a nice shabby chic look. And then I found these bookmarks that I think are gorgeous. They say, be bold and courageous, enjoy simple pleasures, and love what you do. I got this new book and I loved it so much that I wanted to get one for you too. It's called 52 Lists for Calm. And it it is. It's very calming. It's wonderful. If um, if you're interested in this, this author, uh, Morea Seal, she makes quite a few of. She's made quite a few of these, um, with different themes and, and such. But I really like the calm one. It says, "Develop peace of mind and serenity through the calming practice of list making. Learn to be present 
reflect, and release as you create 52 lists, one for each week of the year, in this undated journal. Along the way, develop a personalized toolkit of stress relief strategies. It's very pretty on the inside too. I wanted to show you that. And it's got this velvet bookmark in here. I don't know if you can tell. There you go. Okay. And I didn't get too far into this when I just fell in love with it and wanted to get one for you guys. But it's important to read the beginning. There's about four pages of explaining what the book is and how to use it. And then there's a list of all the different lists. Of course, she would have a list of all the lists, right? <laughs> oh, I love this. It's so pretty. Just looking at it calms me down. But there is... Now, I don't do one list a week. I do a list whenever I just feel like I need a little bit of help calming down. But one that I particularly like so far is on page 18. Take one minute to focus and check in with each of your senses. What do you feel? What do you smell, hear, taste, and see? List everything you can sense right in this moment. It sounds sort of silly, but when I did it, it got my mind off of what was giving me anxiety in that moment. And I tried it again a few days later, and it, it worked like magic again. So I was excited that already on page 18, something in the book actually helped me calm down and it's something I want to do regularly. So I'm, I'm really excited about this book. I think it's just wonderful. And I will put a uh, link to this in the description box in case you aren't interested in entering or maybe you don't win but you want to get one or you want to see the other list books that she has so I'll put that down there and then the last item that I have here it's a, a chamomile tea and blue tansy flower face toner by gypsy soul organics and I'll put a link to this in the description box as well it looks absolutely wonderful it says, shake before using, spritz face and gently massage into skin, use daily after cleansing and before applying moisturizer. It's got rose water, witch hazel, aloe vera leaf, chamomile flower, blue tansy flower, yang yang, patchouli leaf, alemi resin, tangerine peel, and sweet orange peel. And I, I really would love to use this, but I'll tell you the reason that I don't use this particular one um, when I received it is I have an adversity to the smell of patchouli. It's kind of a triggering thing for me. So, but I wanted to, to uh, send it to, to you guys because the ingredients are so good and I think that it might be a really nice Product. So I still wanted to at least share it with, with somebody that maybe doesn't have an, an issue with that scent. Um, now it is, just to, to show you here, it's filled to about here. Now I have not used it or anything, but I did smell it. But just in case you went and, and you get it and you're wondering why it's to there, I'm not really sure, but that's how much is in the actual bottle. So just to let you know. That is it for my book review haul. I'm hoping that I will get to read some more books in September. I will be back the first Wednesday of September going over which books I read this month. And I hope that you join me. I appreciate your watching this video. You have a cozy and relaxing rest of your day. And I love you. Bye. I don't, I don't want to wake her up. She's snoring back there. So I'm not going to have her say bye, but Zelda says bye too.